Did you know that you can buy before you sell? Let's talk about something called first refusal. My name is Fadi Kuder. I'm a local realtor here with Sun Group Ottawa. And if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe so you can get more and more episodes about everything real estate related here in Ottawa. So let's dig into it. What is first right of refusal? So first right of refusal is really a contractual opportunity that gives the holder of the first right of refusal, say the buyer, the opportunity to hold that sale before the seller decides on entering an actual agreement with somebody else. Confusing, but let's talk about it. So basically, let's picture it this way. You got seller number one, the seller. You got buyer number one and buyer number two, three, four, five, plenty. Buyer number one comes to the seller and says, hey, Mr. Seller, I'd like to buy your property, but I wanna buy it on a condition. So that makes the buyer now, the seller may go ahead and accept that offer, but it's really conditional on a, a few other things. So what that does, it gives that buyer number one, what we call the first right of refusal. It's that opportunity to be able to decide if they want to make a decision later on, on actually firming up with the deal or walking away from the deal because their conditions may be not ready yet. So let's just back up the truck a little bit. So say I have a house for sale and I'm not really sure when am I gonna get that house on the market. And all of a sudden my dream home comes up on the market. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and try to buy that dream house. So I contact my local realtor and I say, hey, Fatty, I'd love to go and buy that house. Fatty says, well, your house is not ready for sale. What are we gonna do? At this point, this is when first right of refusal comes in. So we go to the seller and we'll put an offer, a nice offer. A lot of the times you'll find in first right of refusal because you're kind of tied, your hands tied behind your back as a buyer, you're, you know, you're, you're coming in at it from a place where it's not really a strong sort of negotiation tactic. Why? Because you still have to go to market. You still have to sell your property. You still have to do all of those conditions to be able to buy the subject property. So when you come in at the, at the seller, you really have to put a seller, a seller's offer. You have to put an offer to the seller that they cannot refuse. So you'll find a lot of times that it comes out at, at a higher sort of price or you know might be obligated to go with asking, something like that that's going to entice that seller to go, okay, I'll consider this, I'll take that first right of refusal and allow you to kind of hold that property here before I go and make a decision on the next buyer. So now what happens? We go ahead, we put the offer, the seller accepts, and then the work starts. So now the clock starts. So what happens then, now as the buyer, I've already somewhat secured the place, conditional nonetheless, on the fact that I'm gonna be able to go out and now start marketing my property. I go back and call Fatty, hey, now we're in a rush, we gotta go ahead and sell our property. So we go ahead and get our property marketed and ready, and we put it on the market and we start trying to sell our property. And then what happens in that time, this is where it becomes really interesting and stressful sometimes, but it really all depends on how you set it up. When I say interesting and stressful, it could be very stressful for the buyer. Although they have already secured their dream home, it doesn't mean that it's 100% secure. It just gives them that first right of refusal, which means in the event that the seller now gets a second offer from buyer two or buyer three or buyer seven or multiple other offers, the seller has to come to me, buyer number one, and say, hey, Mr. Buyer, you own that first right of refusal would you like to go ahead and firm up on that deal? So now I have two choices. One, go ahead and accept and actually firm up and remove that condition and now the sale is firm, but that puts me at risk. I haven't sold my property yet, or maybe I have, we don't know. That's where the stress comes in. Or number two, I just go, I'm sorry, I can't, and I'll walk away. Really, there's also option three where we could entice the seller with a little bit more money or possibly better conditions, better terms, and extend that period. It's all up to the buyer and the seller and the negotiation tactics that go in there to make this happen. So let's say in the event that the buyer ends up actually putting their house on the market, they go ahead and they sell it, and all of a sudden, great, everything is good. They go back to the seller and say, Mr. Seller, I'm, I'm done. I've already secured the property. I'm gonna go ahead and firm on the deal. Fantastic, they, now they got their dream home and they sold their home. The second one where, we, where it comes a little bit risky is you're putting that offer in, you put your house on the market and then the inevitable happens. You get a second buyer coming in and actually putting an offer in front of the seller that the seller can't refuse. 
now that's where the clock really starts. So normally when we put a condition like that, we always put a timer on it. It could be 48 hours, 72 hours, whatever you're able to kind of negotiate with the seller to let them know that, hey, in the event that you do get a second offer or you do get an offer on the property, which by the way, the seller in all of this process is still entitled to go out and actually market their property. Nobody's holding them from marketing their property. And it does not show on the MLS, the multiple listing, as sold or even conditional. It just shows that it's actually under first refusal. And if you are not sure, always ask your agent, what is first refusal? So at this point, now the clock starts. So let's say, you know, 48 hours. The seller reaches out right away or the seller's agent reaches out to the buyer and says, hey, I got another offer. What are your thoughts? Do you want to firm up or do you want to move away? And this is where I was saying earlier, it becomes a little bit tricky. Confusing, isn't it? This is why I'm here. My name is Fadi Kuder. I'm a local realtor here with Sutton Group Ottawa. And for more videos like this about real estate, commercial or residential, please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, so you can get more and more videos like that. Let's talk real estate.